world to wake up and stop abusing your sister. Look in the eyes and you'll see God, how can you diss her? She's your mother, your sister, your lover, your best friend. you see the soul of life in a beautiful brown skin. Sister. Haku, welcome to Red Rocks, bringing you the best in native music, arts, and culture. I'm Nikki Sandoval, your host. Today I'm joined by members of Culture of Rage, Urban Native Sun, and Phoenix. Hello, how are you doing today? Oh, fine. Happy to be here. We're really glad you could make it and joining us today. How did you get started with Culture of Rage? How long have you been in existence as a, as a band? Well, Culture of Rage actually started in 1993 mm -hmm. out of Oakland, California. Um, there's a big native community in mm -hmm. Oakland, California. And um, we started because we used to have an annual music festival. And so uh, we started off as just myself and the DJ rapping mm -hmm. over program beats, but all the songs were geared towards uh, urban indigenous youth mm -hmm. and the issues uh, that they would face. Mm -hmm. What kinds of issues would you rap about? Everything from uh, police brutality mm -hmm. to, um, to tes testifying to culture and spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Phoenix, when did you join the band? I joined the band in uh, 2000. I was playing prior. I was always, like I told you before, in hip hop rapping mm -hmm. since 84 with the Radio Tron Club. And uh, in 93, I was in a band in East LA. Mm -hmm. And it was also based on indigenous consciousness and awareness and uh, resistance. And uh, we met up in uh, about 94, and 90, uh, around 94, 95. And then we were blessed to do a project together called Capuli mm -hmm. that incorporated a lot of different uh, indigenous MCs from MSDC to Aslan Underground, Culture Rage, and myself, mm -hmm. and, um, which we still have CDs of those available. Uh, people like to hit on our website. We could offer them with that. And, um, and after, that, after that project, I took some time out, and um, Brother brought me back in through Culture Rage. Mm -hmm. That's how I ended up with Culture Rage. I know you started some time ago with your rapping and your music, and even though you're still very young men, um, you're part of another generation now, your parents. Yes. What kinds of messages do you try to convey in your music that are geared towards the next generation of thinkers and musicians and artists? Well, it's, it's definitely... Um my children and my nephews, like my brother Phoenix is here, uh, children that, that keep us going. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that I recognize and that I see is that, is that for the children of this generation behind us, because mm -hmm. I'm approaching 32, mm -hmm. and um, I started when I was like 20, 21, mm -hmm. and uh, they have it a lot harder and, and, and than I did when I was their age. You know, uh -huh. this generation, there's much more of an attack on them mm -hmm. um, through the media, Mm -hmm. um, through all the MTV and the, you know, the pimpology, the bling mm -hmm. bling in, the women are bees and hoes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's all that's provided and that's what's heavily promoted is like this whole party club Im imagery which really goes against, you know, um, culture and, and, and traditional rights, but mm -hmm. that's the image of young people and the image that even younger children are aspiring to be when they grow up. Mm -hmm. And so I think what, what keeps me going is the fact that no one has really picked up the slack of where we started. You know, mm -hmm. there are other conscious bands out there, right. but who's, who's going to really um, testify to the culture, spirituality, parenthood, mm -hmm. uh, show love? You know, like mm -hmm. I told Phoenix when he came and started rapping with us, I said, brother, from all the previous things we recorded, everyone knows that we're angry and why. You know, mm -hmm. now we need, now that we're parents, we need to testify to something to, to really reach people in their hearts. Mm -hmm. you know, of, of their feeling, you know, other than just oppression, other than just um, the, our people's history, but let us know, give them some solutions, mm -hmm. you know, from the love that we find in culture mm -hmm. and our family. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the reason I got in, the reason, one of the reasons why I love being a part of this project too, not only my love for my brother voice here, but uh, when I first was, I, when I was banging East LA, I grew up in East LA, mm -hmm. and uh, seen a lot of brothers pass away at a very young age mm -hmm. and being caught in that situation, uh, I realized I needed a change in my life and through the blessings, uh, I came across some indigenous elders and were able to take me to ceremony, mm -hmm. introduce me to my roots, introduce me to my native cultura, my real sangre, my real blood. And um, down in the prison system, there's the southerners 
and there's the Northerners that mm -hmm. have this this feud and this fight. And uh, me being from East LA and my brother being from Oakland mm -hmm. and being able to come together and show we have this common oppression, we have this common uh, enemy, we have this common history that's been hidden from us. Mm -hmm. And it ain't no longer about North and South, but of us coming together as a people collectively and begin to build for our generations, begin to build for our people and not allow this outside interest to destroy us. That's why we, so when we say where we're from, we say we're from Anawa, because mm -hmm. Anawak in the language of the Aztec or Michica, Anawa meant land between two waters, no borders, north and south. We're native people, we're native blood, our cultures, our traditions are all the same. It was an outside invasion that made us forget that and made us go astray from our culture. If you speak Spanish, mm -hmm. Spanish is from Spain, it's European, it's not our language. English is from England, mm -hmm. it's European, it's not our language. Portuguese or whatever, French, whatever it be, those aren't our native languages. We have our native indigenous tongues, which is proof of who we are. Even the word Mexicano, if you look at the word Mexicano, mm -hmm. uh, it comes from the Aztecas when they went down to Tenochtitlan in Mexico City, they called mm -hmm. themselves Michica which is spelled M-E-X-I-C-A, mm -hmm. which meant children of the earth, children of the soil that had that brown complexion. Mm -hmm. When the Spaniards came, they said, Michica, no. The word is no Michica. When you see Michica, no, I'll give you the M-E-X-I-C-A-N-O, mm -hmm. which is Mexicano. So in the word itself shows that we have an indigenous root. It's time mm -hmm. to eliminate the no and, and reach for the yes and realize we're Michica and we have indigenous blood, where Bitera, Mara, Inca, like we were talking earlier, are. Northern blood, we're all family. In my family, like we're Membreño and Michica, and Apache and Membreño and Michica were always family and tightly linked. And it's time, there was my salvation was knowledge of self, my cultura, realizing who I was to get out of the madness. You know, with the Reagan administration and the Bush administration, with the CIA infiltrating our neighborhoods with crack, was highly proof. There's more evidence we're we'll going all day of them infiltrating our mm -hmm. communities and wanting us to kill and destroy each other. And um, now with this new son of Bush in power, you know, with the CIA child and the skull and bone Freemason, foreign council relations, murder assassin, terrorist, you know, in system, having this focus on somebody else, another person of color in another region. Mm -hmm. And now I feel they're going to try to, more now, like my brother um, voice said, to put us against each other, to destroy each other. So that's why Culture Rage wants to be here, to be the alternative to our brothers, to question their reality, and hopefully break us from that vicious cycle of self-destruction, and know who we are, and start to build for ourselves, like mm -hmm. we were talking earlier, the, the school in El Sereno, Academia Semillas de Pueblo, mm -hmm. to create our own schools that are, are geared around building our self-esteem, our cultural awareness, our academic mm -hmm. skills, so that we will be able to compete and show we are not, you know, these primitive savages, or these ignorant cholos and, 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 and bitches and dogs from these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. But we are human beings, we're all men, we should be right. respected as men and women, and we should be able to produce, if this nation really says it's what it's for, we should be able mm -hmm. to produce for ourselves, build our own schools, build our own businesses, build our own industry for our family, for our children, so we could have something to pass on. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm part of this collective here. Mm -hmm. That's great, and it sounds like cultural rage is not only a message of rage and letting people know about the injustices and the oppression that's out there, but it's also a mes message of hope and of unity for people, for our generation and the next generation and the ones that follow after us. Mm -hmm. And if our viewers wanted to learn more about your messages and about your work and even order some of your music online, how can they find you in the uh, electronic abyss? Well, we just got a cultureofrage.com. Okay. All one word, cultureofrage.com. And uh, through there, we're making this website real youth-oriented. Um, we're having articles, art of, mm -hmm. of murals, uh, spray can art, drawings. Um, a, we're having a children's coloring page where we okay. have uh, black and white drawings with uh, descriptive details of mm -hmm. who, who that person was and why they're cultural icons, why they're cultural heroes, so that the children can learn the culture and have coloring pages to download and print. And then we're having um, contact information. If, as far as performing, we perform mm -hmm. for all cultural events, okay. whether they be college, high school, anything mm -hmm. that promotes culture and family. Um, we we perform. Well, that's the only thing we perform <laughs> at it. Uh, we turn down a lot of gigs because of whether there's being alcohol sold or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we just, you know, we really want to bring the message to the family. We want people to be, be able to bring their family to the gig. So if anyone's organizing, there's contact information. And then we have several albums avi available 
We have the Culture of Rage Eyes Is album, which is what brought me to Los Angeles, which is what mm -hmm. kind of got me popular enough out here, or embraced, I should say, mm -hmm. by, by the Native and Chicano movement here in, uh, in Los Angeles. And then we have the Calpulli album, mm -hmm. which uh, Brother Phoenix here was talking about, where we all came together in Calpulli and Nahuatl, meaning the circle, the sacred circle, like the gathering. Mm -hmm. So it was just all the MCs coming from, from different perspectives, rapping about, you know, our truths. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they be uh, violence, uh, you know, like police brutality, uh, the government, um, or, you know, testifying to culture mm -hmm. and spirituality. You know, that's all on the Calpulli. And that album was hot, you know, mm -hmm. a real hot item. And then we also have the new album, uh, which will be coming out, which will be performing some songs on. Okay. And that's the first all live band okay. uh, album. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, the Osage brother of South uh -huh. San Gabriel. Uh, give a shout out to, uh, to brother Renee. And give a shout out to uh, sister uh, La Brava, who plays flute for us, uh, mm -hmm. beautiful flute. And then all our guitar players, uh, Anton, <laughs> David, and Adonis. So. All right. Uh -huh. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the music that you're going to be sharing with us today. We have a song called Mother, Sister, Daughter, mm. which is just that. We're testifying to, to our, our relations uh, with women mm -hmm. that we've learned um, through our families and through our culture. Mm -hmm. So we, we're talking about our mothers, not only as mother, uh, the Mother Earth, but, but our biological mothers. Mm. And then we talk about our sisters, our peers, and then we talk about um, our, our daughters and our wives. Mm. And then um, we have a song called uh, The Dope Song, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people maybe tune into that for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. but what we're really talking about is how, um, how drugs have really infiltrated not only our movements, but our communities. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what that song is about. And then we have another song, Already Gone, mm -hmm. which specifically talks about um, kind of our disgust of other uh, supposedly conscious bands and how they don't necessarily walk their talk. Mm, you know, um, like mm -hmm. we said, we don't, you know, I don't want to um, say anything bad about people who want to be musicians and where they take their movement. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is when you represent culture and consciousness, you'll have a following and people will follow you. And where are you going to take them? Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to take them to a higher level, to a higher plane where they can, you know, better their lives? Or are you going to take them to the club or to the bar? And now we're going to enjoy some music by Culture of Rage. This song to all the sisters and women who kept the revolution alive. Rest in peace, Lee Lock Brunton, Millie Ketchishana. Universal mothers, daughters, queens From the beating of my heart Press for all her suffering All the woman gets to heal With love and nurturing Dots in blood and breath and tears All gifts of sacredness To all life that related She provides to house the spirit Your soul best stop walking The prayer she holds her dear Oh be a fool, play a punk ass Crawl away your life in fear Plastic like a mother Stripped from her newborn child the grandmother screamed for us to come back home, the children gone wild. In 1954, as a woman shot the U.S. Congress, Puerto Rican nationalist Lolita Leon. With bullets strapped around the chest and a gun in her hand. For Valentina, Celia, and Torporina. Revolution was in the hearts of our abuelitas. For the generations they fought, those Andalitas. Mama, it hurts to see you suffer in any, every way. I thank God for you and you for life each and every day. When I pray from my heart, you always first. Never want you have no hunger, fall, no, never have no thirst. You can always depend upon your son. I was walking with the God and so your prayers are kept me strong. And learn from your example, seen the soul of sun and rain that you endured in daily battle with respect to spot your pain. I know we're far from easy, still you always left on time to provide the way we roll that food and clothes are yours and mine. You is the one I could always talk to. But if you knew the half who know what done you put me through. Mama, I love you, see you 
right as you grow old. A good and loving grandmother whose heart is pure as gold. Thank you for your truth, dignity, and respect. I'll carry forward, rocking tall. With love, I can't forget my mom. The first one to hold me in her arms was my mother. Strong brown woman raised me and my little brother. Through all the hard times, she will still strive. Struggling through an eight to five just to stay alive. Mama made breakfast, picked us up from school at sunset. Made dinner, crashed down the couches trying to cover the rent. I could still hear behind the bathroom door crying at night. Pops left alone the races, that food was to live and ride. But the love of a mother could never be replaced. No matter how hard it got, show us had a smile on her face. Sally Television and Gangsters became my teacher. Lucky kid trying to be a father to my brother. Moms, I saw for all the hard times I made you go through. Picking me up from the station, cause I was acting the fool. The devil tried to destroy our family, but you kept it together. Wouldn't have been able to survive without you. I love you, my mother. This is for my mother, mother. Oh, how we love her, love her. This is for my mother, mother. The queen of oh, grace supreme Cleanse me my soul Like your water stream Yo, yeah, yeah. To all our sisters In the struggle God is giving birth to all the generations The resurrected The healer to all the nations don't believe the stereotypes of the beast to keep you down. You are the co-curator giving life to the brown. Brother, wake up and stop abusing your sister. Look in the eyes and you'll see God. How can you diss her? She's your mother, your sister, your lover, your best friend. you see the soul of life in a beautiful brown skin. Sister, your child are bleeding for life, the theme and the healing care they need in you. Show love, cleanse your body, spirit, brain, gain strength from the pain for the life that you can change as one man. It's the power to change it all with our sisters taking charge. All those families got to fall this we seen. And it's only getting worse, abandoned, drugs, abuse, and neglect all become the white man's curse. You want to see the creator, look at your mother. The woman man is what created to my brother. We were to be the caretakers of the life givers. He was your slave master, taught you to be a player. Who was to be your first teacher was your mother. Who brings the future generations is our sister. Willie Lynch, the slave master, said to maintain the slave. You must pit male and female against each other so they could behave. Bow the sex is the old divide and conquer. Oh, Matthew is the well and he, we need each other. Once we're warriors and clan mothers of the universe. Now we're just bitches and dogs in this American curse. A strong family produce a strong nation. That's why the devil keeps us down on the fear of emancipation. You better start to defend the one that gave you birth. White buffalo, caffeine, no creation, our mother of. Here, girl, you see it's going down like prison in the street. Mothers, babies behind bars, them oppressing family. With images of the bling, like gold and them pimping. Through sex and drugs and then mainstream, to death for murdering. The cycle of nature, the nurture, the balance. The womb of the you love, our sisters, here is the challenge. How we gonna race even a global industry? Where each is out for self and the blood dollar is killing. Your heart in the sense, childhood and tradition. A woman's rough and heal, present family condition. I know I've seen of a wife and single mother. A sister strength and dignity, a grand and great grandmother. And I do hate to see y'all so they sell yourself. After image, drama, drama, instead of running with your wealth. As a woman, warrior, creator, and teacher. Your sister, walk strong, live long, lead our present to the future. My sister, we need we need you, my sister. We need you, my sister. 
we need you, my sister, my sister. This is for my sister. We need you, my sister. We need you, my sister. We need you, my sister. My sister. Man, I don't know what these brothers are talking about, man. No, cause Holy women ain't now. nothing but hoes and tricks, player. I pimp on my women. My cheese mold is gonna happen to your daughter. Degradation is gonna happen to your daughter. Rape is gonna happen to your daughter. Murder is gonna happen to your daughter. Daughter, you are beautiful, but least in every way. Since the day that you were born, my father take you from the grave. I pray to stay in charge, protect the sacred gifts. I'm giving love and not for feeding, paying the wickedness with your heart. Walk tall, be true, and stop against the evil rust and don't be devil too, and break through. Every lie the devil about you, give you an earth, pay the rough creation, respect you. You'll explain this generation by abusing you, my sister. That but not from ocean being a hoe, I was stripper. This is like every sister I know's been the victim, all the stakes done. That made up our race to break the foundation of our nation. Christina Aguilera don't represent the raza. Learn yeah, about anime como a Dante Ramona. Yeah, yeah. Great of gods and men, heaven, the earth, qualique. Con yo chapri, don't ask me, see what qualique. Ha! Ha! We got to testify to the family lies. Moon, daughter, earth, angel, my savior, balance, rise. Manifest a love into a child you gave life. Side by side, every good and bad times, forward, ever, backwards, never. Growing into life and beyond, life on. Family love is strong to your healing, touch your warrior's wisdom, my heart and soul belong. Before long, we'll look back upon these days. Laughing, crying, laugh again, we'll each day giving praise, like always. The family love confers strong as we respect your culture to the spirit that can burn on your worth is prize. Says the moment with my friend. Love the neck cause you know other through the very end. Full strip hand. Cause they don't understand the strength that comes from the love of a family man. It's what I live for. And I'm grateful for each day. We face this daily battle, heart and spirit as we pray. You're the sin of my daughter, let my day on my queen. My reason for living my life, my everything. The greatest ceremony of a witness was you giving life. You honor me by planting my seed and becoming my wife. Like the moon, you brought light into the darkness of my mind. Brought me back into the sun and gave vision to the blind. I couldn't understand my raza till you gave me a familia. Then my responsibilities became more clear, me more than I. I could see my reflection in your eyes, recreated through your womb. I whisper these words of life in your ear for your brain to consume. You didn't care about money, you were there for me. Intertwine your spirit of mind and blessing with the family. The creation, I saw the resurrection of our culture. I finally understood love when we found each other. Me more than I just struggle me through these hard times. My brown Chicana, the inspiration for these rhymes. This is for my doctor, doctor, my doctor, doctor, my doctor, doctor, my doctor, my doctor. For my doctor, so much love and respect for all the women who kept the culture alive through all the hardest times. Much love and respect to our mothers gave the patience, love, and understanding in households without fathers. Much love and respect to all the sisters holding it down, raising your children, pulling your jobs, respecting yourself. Much love to our daughters who will grow with the love and light of culture. And much respect to the balance of our wives who keep us in the struggle. Oh,
Hallelujah. Sit on the bail. Leah Higish. We thank you, Great Spirit, for our queens, our life, our inspiration, our soul, the foundation of our people. Mi Morena. We hope you enjoyed that performance by Culture of Rage. That song, Children, is very important. What impresses me about the work of Culture of Rage is your educational mission, too, to not only um, share your music with people, but also teach people some things. And you were talking to me earlier, Phoenix, about a school that your children go to. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's, it's called Academia Semillas de Pueblo. Right now it's from kindergarten to the eighth grade, but they also want to build the high school. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get funds from anybody that would be willing to donate. Mm. So you can hit their website, Academia Semillas de Pueblo com, or you can hit Culture Rage website, mm -hmm. and we'll have more information how you can link up and donate money to the Academia Semillas de Pueblo because they are a charter school, and um, they do need funds. Uh, a lot of funds have been cut. Probably more funds will be cut with uh, the Terminator and there's Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Urban Native Son in Phoenix. It was a pleasure to have you joining you. us here today on Red Rocks. And thank you for joining us today here on Red Rocks. I'm Nikki Sandoval, your host. Until next time. The lick of the scene's getting whack. A bunch of Mambo King and fake are pushing by us. I'd rather spray my lyrics out with Chicago type right up. Boy, you're busy trying to get up in that limelight. I'm out recruiting squads down to make moves in the twilight. Ready to run up and swing on this capitalist cracker. I turn around, my arm extended. Where you at, my brother? We be already gone. You know, tell them the time. Spineless, castrated, lazy, greedy fools like dope. Revolutionaries produce change in slang hope. The satellites are watchtowers of penitentiary. Yeah, my rhymes are off just like my mentality. What you know about ceremony living like the enemy? The oldest OG tradition is sobriety. Yeah, homie, can you sacrifice for your family? I got too much love and pain, so damn the money. All these years I've been rapping, never made a single penny. And Salvin scared them cause I didn't do it for the Fetty. I got commitments in the need before the family. 600 million spirits possessing and controlling me. From the front hole that cost Caucasian invasion. Eagles of the Southwest, she got no nation. Fuck this new world, I pray the ways of the old. I'm already gone and set, I'm on the red road. And I do testify that my culture will die. Right here in my hand, in my heart it's so high. I'm free to be dying, for our children here crying. The those who can't be heard in this mess on this rising. Every hour on the Netherlands sees all bloodshed and fear. I'm about to go to the beat with the sword of my prayer. Fool, wake up, wake up. My name is Leslie and I'm 11 years old. The beginning of Shumash, a Shumash oral history, retold and written by Monique Soniki. Digital illustrations by Joel Rivers. Very long ago, Nawahi, before the human race, Yi La Ep Eshi Ku, the animal people. My fish were plentiful. One day, a, a spirit, Tikoho Iku, from the island Snacks Almu in the west, Saktana Pa, was looking around. He was admiring the beautiful ocean. Salmon. The spirit, Tikoho Iku, saw in it many different people, pe people such as the starfish people. Kuis, the whale people, Pahat, the fish people, El Elemu, and even the Abalone people, Kako, 
the who were sometimes hiding under large rocks. Hop. The spirit Tako Tako Ho Iku came across the dolphin people El U Kai swimming and playing in the water. Ah. The spirit Tako Ho Iku thought how good to ka it would be to to be a dolphin El Ulukai. So, so the spirit Tokoho Iku turned into a dolphin, El Elu Kai, for the for a time. Soon the spirit Tokoho Iku fell in love with the dolphin, El Kai. They ha they had two children, Tap Niksh. The first was a dolphin, El Ulkai, but the second was from the human race, Yila Epeshi Ku. And that's when the first human, Yila Epeshi Ku, was born from the dolphin, El Ulkai, and the first human, Yi. La Eb Heshiku was the was a woman. And Nick. They raised their children Tap Nick together. The woman and Nick learned to protect and help raise the young children. Tap Nick. When the woman and Nick learned all the important lessons of the dolphin Alu. El Ulkai, she was taken to the shores of Santa Cruz Island. Mitk Tkumak to live. One day, another spirit, Tkoho Iku, from the island Snacks Alamu, was roaming around the ocean salmon. The spirit, Tkoho Iku, saw shark Anoya Iku and fell in love instantly. The spirit Tokoho Iku decided to turn into a shark Anoi Ya Iku Iko for a time. Soon the shark Anoi Ya Iko gave birth to two children. Tap next, the first was a shark Anoi Ya Iku, but the second was was from the human race, Yel Yila Ep Peshi Ku, the man Elamu Elmuna Nun. They taught their children Tap Neksh the ways of the shark Anoya Iku to hunt and move swiftly through the the water. Ah, that's why man Elmuna is the hunter. When the man, Alamunun, had learned all the lessons of the shark, Anoya Iku was, he was taken to the, to the shores of Santa Cruz Island. Santa Cruz Island. Mid Tuku Mak to live. The woman and neck and man Alamunun met and became the island people. Met Kumak. The island people Met Kumak lived good to call and had many children. Tap Nick. This is the beginning of the island. People Met Met Kumak or as we are known now the Shumash. Okay. Dark spirit turned into a shark. Um, where the spirit came? What about it? How he turned into to two different animals? It had different words than a different book. Like what kind of words? Like the two match words. Mm-hmm.
California exists. Clear water streams, fish green wilderness. The last moment of bliss, the less breath of freedom. Read cries, Eureka 49. The pirates come on, good not for hundred thousands. Prospecting gold massacre life. Land and the way of old. Culture of natives, we stand living people. Hunters and gatherers are birth before evil. The slavery legal, April 1815. Act for government protection of Indians, Article 3 and 14. Women and children, bought and sold. Caught diggers, squads, and puta, all for the lust of gold. Go free, genocide, you can hide. Go free, genocide, you can hide. Gold! News that the precious metal had been found buried in the riverbeds of California spread like wildfire after James... California exists. Clear water streams, fish green wilderness. The last moment of bliss, the less breath of freedom. Read cries, Eureka 49. The pirates come on, good not for hundred thousands. Prospecting gold massacre life. Land and the way of old. Culture of natives, we stand living people. Hunters and gatherers are birth before evil. The slavery legal, April 1815. Act for government protection of Indians, Article 3 and 14. Women and children, bought and sold. Caught diggers, squads, and puta, all for the lust of gold. Go free, genocide, you can hide. Go free, genocide. Gold! News that the precious metal had been found buried in the riverbeds of California spread like wildfire after James Marshall found a nugget in the Sacramento River in Coloma on native Madu lands in 1848. The world rushed into the sleepy little village of Yerba Buena, turning it into the bustling city of San Francisco and the center for the California gold rush. In 1849, a year after Marshall's discovery, thousands of would-be millionaires flocked to the state by wagon and eventually by train, bringing with them guns and other weapons. The gold prospectors traveled deep into the Sierra Mountains, down to the brush-covered hills and marshes of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys, and climbed the mountains of the rugged Northwest, invading the lands of hundreds of our communities. For many thousands of years, we have lived here in a good way, living off the bountiful rivers and forests of our mother, the earth. We're standing on my traditional lands um, that no longer belong to us. Um, at this point, um, my tribe only has a 50-acre recognized reservation. But the southeastern Pomo owned all of this land that you can see in the background. This was our private lands, our fishing village. Uh, we sustained ourselves here for over 10,000 years until the arrival of the Spanish and the um, Americans. Everything was fruitful. There was, used to be a lot of elk in here and uh, that kind of thing. And they, the miners just ate all the elk up and left us with nothing. Over the 20 years of the gold rush, the numbers of our people plummeted from 150,000 to 31,000. Most of our ancestors starved to death after being forcibly removed from our lands and prevented from maintaining our traditional ways of living. 
Many of our relatives also died from diseases brought in by the miners. Others were also put to death in a series of deliberate killings organized by the local townspeople and by private militia financed by the state of California. The Wea peoples of modern Eureka and the Pomo of Clear Lake are two communities that were massacred by the settlers. The townspeople of Eureka decided that they wanted to take it. And one night, February 26, 1860, they came quietly, silently. They left their guns at home. And they brought clubs and hatchets. They came while they were sleeping. And the men were gone. And they killed the women and children and the elders. So the island is bloody. And there was a baby found on that island in 1860, the morning of, after the, the massacre took place. And that baby was Jerry James, and he was my great-great-grandfather. It was public policy to take my scalp. It was public policy to take my ear. Public policy even to take my head and sell it to California's government for five bucks. And we're standing at this rock here where it says, uh, Bloody Island scene of a battle between the U.S. soldiers under command of Captain Lyons and Indians under Chief Augustine. This battle that they're calling was actually a massacre of our people here on Venopathy. And it started with, uh, with these two men from um, the Sonoma area called Charles Stone and Andrew Kelsey. They bought some land from uh, Vallejo, General Vallejo, and came up here and brought their cows and settled in the area over there by Kanuktai, uh, the town that they call Kelseyville now. They treated the Indians real bad. They, they would uh, enslave them. They made them build fences around their own village so they couldn't go hunting or gathering. And they wanted complete control. They would tell the parents, bring your little girls to our house, uh, Stone and Kelsey. And the parents would, and if they refused, they would get hung in a tree and they would get whipped and left there all night for punishment. They were treated so bad and starving that they went and killed Charles Stone and Andrew Kelsey. And for killing them, Ben Kelsey uh, heard about it and he got 15 vigilantes together, uh, which one of the vigilantes was the governor of California, William Boggs. Uh, there was lawyers, there were businessmen, I mean, it was just, you know, regular citizens got together and they came over here just to kill and revenge what happened to Andrew Kelsey and Charles Stone. One of the few survivors of this massacre was Lucy Moore, the great-grandmother of Clayton Duncan. The reason why she survived was because of a game that the kids played around here in the Tulis, a hide-and-go-seek game. They would take a reed and they would uh, hide under the water and read through this reed while, you know, they would be hiding. And it was kind of hard to, you know, find a little brown kid in a, in a bunch of tulies, you know, breathing through the reed under the water. And so she knew that game. And uh, when this battle happened, when this butchering happened, well, that's what she'd done. She took this reed. Her mother told her to get a reed. She got under the water, and she started breathing through the reed, and that's how she survived. The Wea and the Pomo were not the only peoples to be targeted for extinction by the miners in the California Gold Rush. The Wintu peoples of Mount Shasta reported deliberate attempts to wipe out entire villages. We had a big feast over toward Trinity, Trinity Center because our tribe goes all that far too. And we have what we call a natural bridge. And that's where they try to feed a, a bunch of Indians and slaughter them for the food, with the poison food also. And then there's another story where the army came in and brought in blankets with smallpox in and uh, got them sick and they couldn't have no cure for it because Indian systems weren't the same as theirs. And so we lost a lot of our Indian people that way. The Ishi was um, a Yana Yahi man. He was believed to be and, and called the, the last wild Indian in North America. Uh, it's practically the only mention of California Indians in the, uh, s in the school system. They, they've never yet uh, been able to, to say that, uh, yes, uh, uh, genocide was practiced upon uh, and carried out to at least a quarter of a million people at a minimum. And all of Ishii's family, 
All of his people, they were all exterminated. Many of the people who survived were forced onto reservations or sold into slavery to provide free labor in the mines and on the ranches. Over 4,000 children were bought and sold at markets at prices ranging from $60 for a boy to $200 for a girl. Enslaved women and girls were sold for higher prices because the miners and ranchers used them for forced sexual labor. For five years, people were kept in concentration camps. Miners would come and take girls and boys, rape them, sell them, and finally they were put on the Surrettes Indian Reservation, the Grand Ronde Reservation in Oregon. 30 women, five couples, were allowed to stay because the couples were elders, and the women were with minors. My great 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 grandmother was one of those women. Immigrant disease, smallpox, malaria, tuberculosis, measles, typhoid, cholera, killed over half of the native California population. 700,000 people, white men's devastation to 150,000 in 1845 to 31,000 in 1870. Finding a stay alive against scalp on head hunters, funded by the state. Slavery, child prostitution, racism, hate. Plan for extermination, forced to assimilate. For your shiny ring and chain, the rest forced to relocate. Death for starvation, federal reservations, the people's cries for paying for your gold. Gold, green, genocide, you can't hide. Gold, green, genocide, you can't hide. The image of 49ers panning for gold is another myth of the gold rush. Accompanying the genocide was an unprecedented destruction of California's environment, such as clear-cut logging to build houses for the miners. The gold miners dug up 12 billion tons of earth, excavating riverbeds with giant dredges, and riverbanks with specially designed water cannons, blasting apart hillsides in their greed, flushing the earth into the rivers, where they flooded the towns and fields of the Sacramento and Central Valley. We're looking at the uh, Malakoff pit, a hydraulic pit, which I believe is the largest hydraulic excavation in the world, that was created by uh, the North Bloomfield Mining and Gravel Company between the years uh, 1865 and 1884. Uh, this was a very efficient mine, and for that reason, it created a lot of tailings. Tailings are the uh, uh, waste gravel from this kind of a mine that was dumped into the streams. That soil and those trees sit on top of what was once a riverbed 60 million years ago. To mine this, all of this is blasted away by water cannons or hydraulic mo uh, monitors and run through sluice boxes. Um, those sluice boxes were charged, as they said, with uh, mercury or quicksilver. Hydraulic. And the full force water comes through here, into this place here. Right here, the full force water coming here. And we come up here, had a big weight here, big weight right here. Then we come along here, we hang on to this here. You know, hang on to this here. So the water so got darn powerful that you're going to start shooting. You're going to shoot any goddamn thing from here to the car, way up there. With the full force of that thing. They call that the giant. I watched him and I seen a mine. Boy, they can take a hillside down fast. All of the debris that uh, was dumped into the river as a result, and by the debris I mean the literally the pulverized mountain. Uh, the mountain uh, was pulverized into a substance that at that time was called slickens. And uh, the, the, the phrase of the day was that slickens was uh, too thick to drink and too thin to plow. Now you can see how shallow the river is here. 
And the river's shallowness is caused by the hydraulic mining with the silt buildup all along the river, uh, raising the banks 30 feet, uh, making it very difficult to protect the city of Marysville. Uh, in 1875, the, the levees of Marysville were breached, and the city was not just underwater, but it was buried in slickens. The basements filled up. The first stories of the, of the buildings in Marysville filled up with slickens so that for months afterward, the city did not only have to drain itself of water, it had to dig itself out of the slickens uh, with wheelbarrows and wagons and men with shovels working daily to excavate the city. And it also inundated acres and acres of farmland. So there were a series of legal uh, challenges to this style of mining. In uh, 1884, in the case of Woodruff versus uh, North Bloomfield Mining and Gravel Company, Judge Alonzo Sawyer uh, issued a, a ruling that uh, eff effectively ended hydraulic mining. And that ruling was that the tailings could no longer be dumped into the watercourses. With that kind of a constraint, the investors in these mines uh, didn't feel that they could make a profit and they pulled out. In addition, the miners used mercury to extract gold from the ore, losing 7,600 tons of the toxic metal into local rivers and lakes. Mercury is a deadly toxin that affects the kidney, the brain, and the nervous system. A teaspoon of mercury poured into a pond would be enough to contaminate all the fish, as well as anyone who ate fish out of the pond. That mercury remains with us today in the San Francisco Bay and in the American Bear Feather, Klamath, Sacramento, and Yuba Rivers. These days, there have been some abandoned mine surveys trying to get a sense of where that most of the mercury left over from those days is concentrated. And probably the highest concentration of mercury is uh, found in these drain tunnels, of which every hydraulic mine has at least one. We're surrounded by a beautiful, once beautiful lake that we can't even walk into, and it's dangerous to even fish or eat the uh, natural uh, like wildlife or the plants that we once gathered and harvested. The major concern that we have is we felt a lot of our elders, our fishermen, died of mercury poisoning. And at that time, none of us knew um, why they were dying at early ages. Uh, my father was one of those people who died in 1982. And later on, we realized that he had symptoms of mercury poisoning. When our fishermen went out, they didn't just throw a pole in, they fished through nets, seines, and traps. And when that fish was brought in, they shared it with the whole community. So what we were doing was spreading the mercury contamination to our families without realizing it. Deadly mercury affects the brain and kidney, dissolves gold out of oil, runs in the rivers to the sea, in the Yuma, Feather, Bear, American rivers all the way, through the Sacramento River, through the San Francisco Bay, streams and lakes turn to toxins and mud, all life and vegetation destroyed, for what? Mountains blasted, city-sized pits in the earth, hydraulic mining and mercury, was it worth it for your gold, green, genocide, you can One hundred and fifty years after the gold rush, the search for the yellow metal has not ended. Mining companies have switched to deadly cyanide instead of mercury in places like Clear Lake and Death Valley. Although the biggest rush for gold is across the border on Shoshone lands in modern Nevada. Meanwhile, California's native peoples continue to fight for recognition of our traditional lands, as well as our hunting, gathering, and fishing rights. And along the way, the Karu peoples of the Klamath River the Wea peoples of Eureka, and the Pomo of Clear Lake are teaching the next generation the cultural traditions of storytelling, songs, dances, basket weaving, and medicine gathering. Everything we once lived for is now contaminated. Our whole livelihood and our lifestyle is gone. So it's like the, the government wants us to accept society the way it is. The reason why they, they didn't want to recognize us because we had all the water, we had all the timber, we had all the gold, we had the copper, and wildlife, and you name it. That's the reason why they want to recognize us. So today we're recognized, and I strongly believe we're going to make it. We, 
the Pit River people, the Pit River tribe or nation, and Redding Rancheria, and here we are today. They were the two federally recognized tribes that the federal government decided had the legal right to Ishii's remains. We returned Ishii, we got him back, we did it in a good way. Uh, he is buried in the heartland of uh, his people's country, uh, his uh, family members, his uh, ancestors. Uh, uh, he was allowed to be free. The great thing I can say about my tribe, and there are a few other tribes in the, the state, we've maintained our ceremonial uh, practices. We still have a roundhouse, and we still practice and have ceremonies there. Um, that is a tradition that keeps going. I'm also very proud that our elders empowered all our families with tradition, and we have younger people stepping up to take their roles and responsibilities in that. Keep the tradition alive and just stay strong and stay on the right path. Keep dancing, keep the culture going, and pass it on and pass it on. This song came to me, and I call it Going Home. And literally, we are going to go home soon. We will have our dances on our island soon. And um, this is the song. Nahi nahi noa, nahi nahi noa, nahi nahi noa, e noa, e noa, nahi nahi noa, nahi nahi noa, nahi nahi noa, e noa, e noa. You should see it's the same. You may think it's all the past that continues today. Sign, not least technology. These three million tons of waste for every ton of gold. More dangerous than guns from Alaska to Brazil. I forgot to the Philippines, killing, not destroying Earth. From more gold cash we've seen. These devils dropping out to the rivers 10,000 times. More acidic than car batteries from mountain drainage. Don't be blind, stop the mining of gold. Destroying the environment, people and water. In the futures of us, heaven sent our children up today and tomorrow we're gonna suffer the devil got you fool go more important than your mother mother mother